understood that uh, under this discounted cash flow based valuation model we can use either dividends or uh, free cash flows or even residual income as the definition of cash flows so right now we will look at how can i use free cash flows from the perspective of valuing a particular equity security so whenever we are talking about uh, free cash flows we have two different uh, terms free cash flow to the firm and free cash flow to the equity so freely how much is cash how much cash is flowing to the firm or freely how much cash is available to the equity investors this is what uh, is the definition of uh, these two aspects so just uh, to look at a slightly more detail about it when i talk about the free cash flow to the firm it is the cash that is available with the firm which can be used to distribute to all its investors when i say all its investors it includes uh, the debt investors who have lent to the company as well as equity investors after all the business related spending and payments after the company has really spent and paid to the <coughs> suppliers vendors everything even for the capital expenditure for that year whatever the spendings have happened after that whatever the cash that is left with the company if possible which can be distributed both to the lenders as well as equity investors is what we are calling as the free cash flow to the firm and out of that if i am even removing whatever that needs to be paid to the lenders like the interest payments as well as principal repayments out of whatever the cash that is available post its operational and capital expenditures whatever the amount that is whatever the real cash that is left with the firm we call it as free cash flow to the firm and out of that free cash flow whatever is the payment that needs to be done towards the lenders which includes interest payments as well as uh, principal payments or new principal raise whatever it is that portion if i take off that is what we are calling as free cash flow to the equity I mean that amount of cash is available with the firm to be distributed to the equity investors because equity investors just get the residual whatever is left after distributing uh, to the lenders whatever is left that is what is going to the equity investors so when i say free cash flow to the equity it is that amount of capital after uh, that amount of cash after the company has really spent everything for the business in that year and also made the necessary uh, payment that need to be done towards uh, the interest and the principal payments whatever is the cash that is really left that is what we are calling as the free cash flow to the equity so when i <coughs> project now when it comes to valuation i am projecting projecting the free cash flow to the firm as well as free cash flow to the equity for the next few years any valuation process the present value of the future cash flows here instead of cash flows we are taking them as the the the, the element which we are considering as cash flows here is free cash flows so that free cash flows i have to project for the future it could be for an infinite period because we generally assume that the firm is a going concern so i project the free cash flows for the future so it could be fcff or fcfe any of them i am projecting them for the infinite uh, period discounting them to the present value 
to so what i am using for discounting if i am projecting fc fees then i will discount them with the real required rate of return of equity if i am projecting fc ffs i will discount them with weighted average cost of capital because this is the return that is expected only by equity investors but when i say weighted average cost of capital it is the return that is expected both by debt investors as well as equity investors so i discount <coughs> fcffs by the weighted average cost of capital to arrive at the value of the firm value of the firm in total wherein you have debt as well as equity separately so the fcff model will give me the total value of the firm not the value of a share right so out of that total value of the firm i remove the value of the debt which is nothing but the amount of debt principal that is outstanding as of that particular date if i remove that value of debt whatever i am left with is the value of equity so it does not give me the value of uh, equity share directly i will end up finding out the value of the firm by discounting the future fc ffs by the weighted average cost of capital and uh, from that i remove the value of the debt which is the amount of debt that is outstanding as on that date of valuation which gives me value of equity and then divide it by the number of outstanding shares to arrive at value per share so especially it is very good to have if the company is having very huge volumes of debt also or the capital structure of the firm capital structure is more or less volatile it's not constant if the capital structure keeps uh, changing year over year in all these and if that to the debt composition is significantly higher it is better to use fc ff based model rather than fc fe based model because there is a possibility that if the company is having heavy debt after the operations if i take out the payments towards the interest as well as principal repayment to arrive at fc fe it may so happen that the fc fe may turn negative whereas fc ff is positive especially for a firm which has very heavy volumes of debt so from that perspective negative fc fes may not have any kind of an influence in the valuation process so it's always better in those kind of situations we resort to fc ff based valuation identify the value of the total firm then subtract the value of the debt to arrive at the value of equity so even fc ff can help me direct uh, finding out the value of the firm but may not be a direct route i start with valuing the firm first and from there subtract the debt to get the equity part whereas when i am talking about fc fe i discount it with the required rate of return on equity i don't consider the debt at all so only when the capital structure is more or less constant means debt is existing but the proportion is more or less the same every uh, period whenever i have such kind of scenario it's better to use fc fe based models and few more uh, important points to remember in this context any corporate action that the company gets into especially declaration of the dividend or share repurchases any such kind of corporate action it does not have any kind of change on fcfe or fcff because we are defining fcfe as the cash that is available with the firm the cash that is available with the firm after the operational and the capital expenditures right the dividend is a part of whatever the cash that is left 
so out of the cash that is left the company can think of paying some portion of it as a dividend or it may not pay any dividend so but what we are trying to compute at the layer of fcff or fcfe is one layer above the dividend itself how much cash is really available with the firm whether it pays a dividend or not it is as per its dividend policy we are not even coming to that step we are simply looking at what is the cash that is available let it do whatever let it retain let it uh, pay dividend let it do a share repurchase whatever it wants to do let it do we are looking at fcfp and fcff one step above that process itself so any such kind of corporate actions will not have any impact on fcfe or fcff and similarly any change in the capital structure leverage increasing decreasing it may not impact the fcff at all to some extent it will impact fcfe because in fcfe we are talking about uh, subtracting the payments towards the debt investors in terms of interest payments as well as principal payment so with a change in the capital structure or change in leverage i see fcf e will get impacted but fcff will not but coming to the corporate actions anything any dividend share repurchase whatever is happening we are focusing one level above it so these things will not impact the fcfp or fcff at all this is one important uh, interesting aspect uh, that we need to be comfortable with right and uh, so if at all my objective is to arrive at the value of the firm the focus is uh, using fcff value of equity i can use either of the approaches but if at all my capital structure is constant it's better to go and try with the fcfe based approach itself all right see when do i need to go with the free cash flow based approach see we have a dividend uh, dividend uh, based uh, discounting model approach we also have a free cash flow based uh, valuation approach when should i look at it to some extent we have discussed on it especially if the company does not pay any dividend or whatever the dividend that is paying is not in line with the earnings when it is not in line with the long term profitability of the company if the dividends are in line with the earnings of the firm where the firms are majorly uh, majorly uh, declaring constant kind of uh, dividends or constant growth in dividends which are more or less aligned with the earnings which they are having and it is in line with the long term growth rate of the company then looking at dividend discounting model is appropriate but most of the times we find firms don't fall into any of these categories so which means even though a dividend discounting model is available it's always suggested that we can look at a free cash flow based approach because most of the times we find firms they don't pay either dividends in a regular manner or even if they pay the dividends regularly it may not be in line with the earnings and it is at the discretion of the management which may keep changing altogether so there is an intervention at that time management intervention but whereas when it comes to free cash flow i am really not bothered about the dividend policy of the company itself they may pay dividend they may not pay dividend they may pay poor dividend they may pay uh, completely uh, unexpected kind of dividend we are completely not bothered because we are operating at one step higher and the other dimension to look at is especially when i am trying to do the valuation of the firm from a controlling stakeholders perspective especially if the objective is uh, for acquisition or taking a a private equity uh, kind of a stake in that particular firm wherever the intention is from a majority or a controlling stakeholders perspective it's not advisable to look at a dividend discounting model at all 